What's going on, everyone? So, Screams have Sydney Prescott. She is uh, supposed to be one of the main focuses. Based on the rumors, take the rumors with a grain of salt. Based on the rumors, it's supposed to be kind of half Sydney Prescott, half uh, the, the new cast, the new characters. We'll see how those go, right? The idea would be, hey, let's bring a new group, let's bring a new cast. Maybe we can squeeze out a couple more films beyond Scream 7 and kind of see how uh, these characters are perceived. The, the final two or however many that end up surviving, maybe they hit for audiences and we don't have to stop or take a little break, right? Maybe we can make a Scream 8, 9, so on and so forth and, and just kind of have the, maybe this could be kind of the, the passing of the torch film. Uh, for Sydney to a new generation. Uh, but with Sydney Prescott being in this film, and if this is truly going to be a continuation uh, where it's basically it is Scream 7, uh, I've thrown out the idea of like, what if they kind of retcon that and they kind of just let five and six kind of be its own thing? Then you kind of get away with some stuff. You could do some stuff that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. But let's assume that they're going to do what is most likely and most expected, which is that this is a continued story from Scream 5 and 6. Whatever they do, Mark and Kate has to be in this film. They have to get Patrick Dempsey back as Sidney's husband and whatnot because you didn't have him in Scream 5. And one of the biggest questions by pretty much everybody was, where's Mark? You know, and I understand she said, oh, Mark and the kids are fine. You know, they're playing it safe. Like, he is a detective who has a gat and it's YouTube. Gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. I was gonna say the, the other word, but YouTube's certain buzzwords or whatever. But you know, like you're talking about a husband who is a detective who is going to want to protect his wife. You know, like till death do you part. You you honor your wife. Like it just how many times is he just going to let Sydney go off to fight Ghostface while he's just at home chilling? Like, I understand it's like, hey, I'll go handle this. You stay with the kids and protect the kids. I get that, but it's just like, you don't have anyone else? Send the kids to another country with a relative or something, whatever, right? Like, that would be my, if I, like, if my girl was gonna go face ghost face i'm not letting her do that alone yeah like i have kids but guess what we'll find somewhere to put them and keep them safe so i can go help you so you don't have to go at it alone right like now now you go out by yourself you're dead and now my children have no mother because i couldn't go with you and maybe protect you and help you like it just as a husband as a detective and cop he's got to be there so i just i don't see a way that you can do this without Mark Kincaid, right? Patrick Dempsey. Now, can you do it without him? Of course. But it, it, at this point, it's like, it's silly. It's like, now this will be the second time that Sydney's face goes face and Mark Kincaid just isn't around, right? The problem though is, is like, do you, do you cast somebody else to play him? And because the thing is, is like audience members... Uh, so, yeah, the, the general audience, I'm actually curious to how many people can make the connection. Us diehard Scream fans, we would immediately, like, hey, hey, you know, like, uh, what's the, the meme from uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood where he's like, hey, like, you know, like the little snap, there he is, like, that's how we would all be. It's like, wait a minute, that's not Patrick Dempsey, that's not Mark Kincaid, you can't trick us. But I think most audiences probably wouldn't even make the connection. Most, I mean, most audiences probably, I mean, there was, I, I remember getting comments asking me who Sydney's husband was. And when they basically said, in reference to it was when they said Mark and they were like, who's Mark? Like, how do, how do, and I was like, Mark Kincaid, like the detective. And people were like, who? Like, cause again, it's, it's just like, I, I mean, Scream 3 in general is really hit or miss for people, but you, you don't really remember that prominent, and it just, it they didn't end Scream 3 as if those two were together. 
And so, I mean, technically, you're talking three movies now if you go this one without Mark Kincaid, right? You would have Scream 4, you'd have Scream 5, and then now you're going to have Scream 7. Now, I I think you can get away with Scream 5 or Scream 4 because she was on a book tour, right? So she was not, and this was like so far removed. It was all sunshines and rainbows. So it wasn't like in Scream 5 where she's going to Dewey and Gale's aid to take on Ghostface. Can Mark Kincaid actually get away with that twice? Which, again, technically it'd be three times. But I'll give him a pass on on the on Scream 4 just because, again, like, no one was expecting it, right? Like, she was doing her book tour. She's making a stop in Woodsboro. Or it all started where it all began. Life was supposed to be great. She was supposed to do the book tour, get in, get out. And then nothing was supposed to happen. And then Ghostface pops up. Jill does a little slicing and dicing. All of a sudden, it's like, uh-oh. But just in general, right? Like, I just think, I just don't think you can get away with doing a Scream 7 without Mark Kincaid. Again, you could justify it. You could do a little throwaway thing. You could, whatever. But, it's just, it's going to be so disappointing. And it's going to be so, for us, again, I default to the general audience, right? I, I talk about this a lot because I do want people to understand. Like, you watching this video, you're not just a general audience member. You're not a casual Scream fan. Most casual Scream fans aren't actively looking up rumors and staying in the loop for news. Like, they're just going to the, the large, large majority. The 99 percent tile is all going to just go into this movie blindly. They see Ghostface. They see it's a new screen movie. They know it's going to be a slasher, right? It's a scary movie, period. They're just going to go watch it. But the scream diehards like myself and you watching this video, we're the ones that are very meticulous. Like we're the ones that are seeing all the nuances. So, you know, for general audiences, Mark Kincaid in Scream 5. Probably, I mean, people, like I said, I got, I remember getting literal comments of people that didn't even make the connection or didn't even realize, like, who Mark Kincaid was. So I don't think many people are going to go, oh, like, he should have been in Scream 7. They messed up. But for us, and for a franchise that's usually very good at, like, attention to details and, you know, making the connections and whatnot, you have to have Kincaid in the movie. You have to. You have to. Right. And ideally, if ideally you get Patrick Dempsey, I, I really hope they don't recast, but you almost, you almost have no choice. If he doesn't want, if he says, no, I, sorry, I'm not going to do it, which I think he will. Cause he was in Thanksgiving. Right. Like, so it's like, Hey man, come on. You were in Thanksgiving. Give us one, one more scream film. All right. We're going to wrap this up. Sydney's going to ride off in the sunset. You and her are going to be great. And just, just give us this one, right? Just, just give, just, just break us off this one, please. Like that's, that's my hope. And since he just did Thanksgiving, right? Like, if you look and it's like, oh well, he hasn't done any horror movies or he hasn't done any slasher movies or anything like that since Scream Three. You no, know, it's like ah, oh, he hasn't done anything like that in twenty years. It's like, okay, he's probably not going to come back for it. But it's like you literally just did a slasher film. And, and uh, you know, a year ago. <laughs> hey, come on, man. Like, help us with Scream here. And so that's my hope. And with Kevin Williamson directing it, I'm hoping that maybe, you know, because, again, he was on Scream 3. He was around Kevin. He was around Wes. And just kind of that, like, hey, come on. Like, do it for us type thing. Maybe maybe Sydney can, or Nev, can hit him up and be like, brother, which I think is funny. I mean, even Nev has joked about how funny it is that they played siblings on a TV show and and scream they're married. <laughs> but, you know, she could hit them up, be like, dude, we need you. Come on. Do this last one with me. We're married. Come on, husband. Let's make it work. Get him. Get Gail. Get Sydney. Get the game back together. And and let's let's do this right. 
Because you you gotta have it. You can't. I just I can't see it making sense. I mean, it was disappointing in Scream Five. I, I just I think it's gonna be even more disappointing because at least Scream Five wasn't Sydney focused. I Scream Five at least. It was, Sydney was kind of the back burner. She was kind of a cameo or an extended cameo more than she was like a main piece. I, I, she was kind of just there, popped up, you know, kind of the midway point briefly. She was only in a handful of scenes. Like, it's just, to me, it's like this film, if it really is going to be Sydney centric, Sydney focused, Sydney. You, you got to have her family involved. That or you should have, I mean, you never should have established it. <laughs> I like that. And, and, and this goes into my thing is that like, I just, it's why I hated Scream 5. I, I mean, if you go back and watch the videos that I've made enough time, and I might do, I might just talk about this in a separate video, but like you go back and you look at, some of the videos I made around Scream 5 and stuff and I, all the concerns that I had leading into the film and all the things that I said that they shouldn't do. Well, guess what? They did all the things that I said that they shouldn't have done. And part of the reason that I said that they shouldn't do that is because they're going to paint themselves into a box that they might not be able to get out of. And what did they just do? Because they didn't have expectations. They didn't assume that like, oh, something would happen Again, I'm not going to get into that. I've talked about it enough. Like, you know, oh, something's going to happen that's going to lead to the direction we're headed going completely out the window. And and now we got to scramble and figure it out. Where if you didn't paint yourself into a box, if you didn't make Scream 5 bloodline characters and make it a, 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 a re almost remake of the original and Scream 6 wasn't just like, in many ways, I know it had some originality, but in many ways it was a copy of Scream 6 and you had, you know, Billy's daughter and you, you, you did the basic typical tropes that aren't designed for multiple films. It's for this, like, here, here's your one or whatever. And they thought that they could get away with it and it, blew up in their face, and now they're in a position to where they did a bunch of stuff that needs to be answered. They did a bunch of stuff that has questions. What's up with Leslie Mocker? What's up with Christina Carpenter? What's up? I mean, there's 20 different things that I can think of that should be explained in Scream 7 that none of it is going to be explained in Scream 7. I just don't think you can have Mark Kincaid, Sidney's husband, be something else. And the problem is, because in the movie, she just says Mark. But it was confirmed multiple times, even by Nev herself, that it's Mark Kincaid is her husband. That they relayed that to her. Now, if you didn't do that, if you just said, oh, it's Mark, you know, we're going to see how it goes, then you could, you could have had anybody be the husband. But now everybody knows it's Mark Kincaid. Except for maybe the general audience. And that might be their one scapegoat. That might be their one out. Um, but anyway, as always, this is a discussion. I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? I think Mark Cade has to be in this movie. Do you think like, nah, it's all right if he's not. Um, again, whatever your thoughts are, love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. I hope you enjoy these types of videos and I truly appreciate it. Now subscribe to the channel. What are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.